Uh, Veritas48 recently posted a video response to my The Fuss About Homosexuality video, in which he argues against the extension of marriage rights to same-sex couples. Um, Veritas and I have already exchanged some comments about this via private message, um, but the topic seemed important enough, at least to me, uh, to merit my doing a video to respond publicly, um, at least to some of Veritas's claims and arguments. Um, by the way, I've put a link to Veritas's video to the right of the screen here. Um, before I say anything else, I should note that I recognize this is a very heated topic uh, with a lot of emotion attached to it. I'm not a heterophobe. I live in New York City, which has one of the highest heterosexual populations in the country. Seriously. They're everywhere. We even have famous ones. Uh, I don't advocate beating up heterosexuals. I just simply hold the view that the right to marry should be extended to homosexual couples. Oh, just some good-natured kidding about uh, Veritas' disclaimer at the top of his video. If you haven't watched it, watch it, and then I hope you'll get the joke. All right, let's get to it. I'll briefly summarize Veritas's case against same-sex marriage as I understand it. Um, he claims that extending the right to marry to same-sex couples constitutes a redefinition of marriage. Such redefinition is problematic because, Veritas claims, uh, marriage does not actually admit of redefinition. Rather, it has what Veritas calls, quote, a particular objective nature, unquote, that precludes redefinition. We don't define marriage, much less redefine it. Uh, rather, we merely describe marriage. So, if society goes on to attempt the impossible, a redefinition of marriage by extending it to same-sex couples, this will create the conditions for some problematic results. Listen to a bit of what he said about this. If marriage is redefined, some counterintuitive results will occur. For example, once you cross the bridge that says that you can define marriage in any way you want, then you can literally define it any way you want. Once you take the first step and you redefine marriage, you've established a logic from then on, a paradigm that justifies the next step. And these steps follow the logic of the previous move. So then the question can be raised, why ought we not allow polygamous marriages or incestuous marriages? After all, if the requirements of marriage are subject to revision from the start, then further revision becomes all the more logical. So, if we allow same-sex marriage, why not polygamy? Why not incest? Uh, moreover, Veritas contends, uh, redefining marriage will ultimately render marriage meaningless. Um, as I understand what's being contended here, the idea is once homosexuals are invited into the institution of marriage, heterosexuals will find marriage less appealing and choose to marry less frequently. Uh, Veritas points to some European nations where he believes this is already happening. Um, what strikes me as the crux of Veritas's argument is the following. He contends that marriage is deeply connected with family and family is the basic unit of civilization. More specifically, he claims, this connection to family is about what he calls the, quote, natural pairing of a man and a woman, and its unique biological capacity to produce children on its own. So denying same-sex couples the right to marry isn't so much about discrimination against them as it is about protecting the connection between marriage and procreation. If that's disrupted, civilization is threatened. Listen to a bit of what he said about this. Disallowing same-sex marriage has less to do with discrimination against homosexuals and more to do with a vested interest in the next generation, which by nature only heterosexual couples can produce. First, I want to address this bit about the asserted link between marriage and procreation. Um, to be sure, one... And I do stress one of the reasons society privileges marriage is because society has an interest in creating a stable environment in which a couple may have a child or children and raise that child or children. However, there is not now, nor has there ever been in this society and in most societies, a requirement to procreate 
or even to have the capacity to procreate in order to get married. A sterile heterosexual couple may obtain a marriage license and get married in precisely the same way the most fertile heterosexuals on earth may obtain a marriage license and get married. The sterile heterosexual couple is regarded as just as married as the uber-fertile heterosexual couple is married. The sterile heterosexual couple will not be turned away by the county clerk, denied a marriage license, or even questioned as to their biological capacity to produce children, or more correctly, their lack of said biological capacity. A homosexual couple is, biologically speaking, nothing but one variety of a sterile union, and in principle, no different from a woman without a uterus and a man who doesn't produce sperm. Yet the former is denied the right to marry, while the latter is not. If the capacity to produce children is what marriage is truly all about, then the woman without a uterus and the non-sperm producing male seeking a marriage license should be turned away just as the homosexual couple is. With respect to the capacity to have children, the two are similarly situated. That is, no different in principle. Uh, therefore, as presented, Veritas's argument must call for denying sterile heterosexuals the right to marry because of the link between marriage and procreation and society's vested interest in the next generation, which only fertile heterosexual couples can produce. However, I suspect Veritas does not call for denying sterile heterosexuals the right to marry, given the similar situation between them and homosexual couples vis-a-vis -vis the capacity to procreate, the question is begged, why isn't he calling for the exclusion of sterile heterosexuals from marriage? If they're permitted to marry, why not polygamy? Why not incest? With respect to polygamy and incest, it seems to me there are solid secular reasons for maintaining the ban on each of them. Uh, these reasons stand quite apart from the matter of whether the legal right to marry is extended to homosexual couples. Andrew Sullivan once said that the bit about same-sex marriage paving the way to polygamy and incest is not truly an argument. Rather, it's a panic. <laughs> I would add that often it's little more than demagoguery. Not, I hasten to add, that I'm suggesting Veritas 48 is engaging in demagoguery here. I'm not suggesting that at all. Um, with respect to the claim that marriage is an objective reality rather than a social construction, I'll ask here what I asked Veritas in a private message. What does that mean? How can one know that marriage has this, quote, objective nature? And how can one know the details of this purportedly objective nature. Um, marital arrangements have varied often in very significant ways over the course of human history as well as between, among, and within different societies and cultures. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, plural marriage appears quite early, in the fourth chapter of Genesis. Ultimately, the claim that marriage has some objective nature that precludes it from being extended to homosexual couples strikes me as a mere assertion, and an extremely tendentious one at that, which doesn't admit of meaningful development and withers under scrutiny. It is a grave injustice that homosexual couples have largely been denied the legal right to marry. It is, however, an injustice that has been strongly challenged, and that is beginning to be dismantled. I'm reminded of what Martin Luther King Jr. once said, let us realize that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice.